Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland, and on behalf of JSA, thank you for tuning in to our JSA Virtual Roundtable, positioning our industry for the next phase of digital transformation, the crossroads between hybrid IT cloud and edge. We do have a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Our first 100 registrants for today's roundtable have now received lunch delivered to your door or a gift card, so please enjoy. We do have well over 200 registrations for today's roundtable, so if you weren't one of our first, hopefully next time. So make sure you register early for our monthly roundtables at jsa.net. We do want to hear from you and make this roundtable experience as interactive as possible for you. So Feel free to add any questions that you have right into our chat. Also, stick around once our roundtable is over today so you can join our virtual networking tables immediately following for a unique opportunity to talk face-to-face -face with other event attendees and speakers. Simply join in the table in the lounge area and let the networking begin. All right, so let's get started. To introduce our speakers and to moderate the discussion, please welcome Rosemary Cochran, Principal Analyst and Co-Founder at Vertical Systems Group. We appreciate you being with us today, Rosemary. The floor is yours. Thanks very much, Laura, and thanks to uh, JSA for putting together this uh, fantastic roundtable of speakers. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. It's a hot topic and getting much hotter. So. Uh, I will um, start off with a, a quick slide um, from my company, which is uh, really focused on networking services for many years. We've been through many transitions in the industry. So uh, I'd like to introduce the speakers. I will, thank you. And, and uh, we appreciate the invitation to participate. Uh, my name is Lauren Long and I'm the Chief Development Officer uh, and a co-founder at Dark Points. Uh, we are focused on the edge uh, and all parts of it, enabling uh, infrastructure uh, and connectivity and interconnectivity for uh, for all the customers who are trying to reach reach the markets and and get closer to um, to where they want to deliver services. Excellent. And next, uh, Lawrence Lee. Yes, thank you for this time. Uh, so I'm Lawrence Lee. Uh, people call me LL, uh, just to make it easier. So I head up the global partnership and alliances here at Zenlayer. So Zenlayer is a uh, leading edge cloud service provider, very much focused in the emerging markets. Um, you know, currently we have over 200 data centers deployed all throughout. That's all interconnected through our global fabric, our network. We run our bare metal cloud, which I'll kind of get into. Uh, you know, allowing customers to really you know, process a lot of their data locally in, you know, very hard to reach countries, you know, throughout India, China, Middle East, LATAM, et cetera. And so really excited about this opportunity to share a little bit about our company, what we're doing on the market. Thank you. Great. Thanks, hello. And next, uh, uh, Lisa Bodine. Hi, good afternoon, and thanks for having me. I'm Lisa Bodine with Involta, uh, located in Duluth, Minnesota, where one of our data centers is housed. We have been providing hybrid IT services in edge markets really now, going on just about 15 years. So uh, we are located in several uh, secondary markets. Uh, today, we have really transformed our services to uh, well beyond data center services and pair that with the strategic consulting and expertise of our team. So thanks for having us. And I'm not, I, I didn't mean to pinch, uh, I like to mention that Bruce Lehrman was supposed to join us and he was not able. So uh, I'm here in his absence. Well, well, we're glad to have you, Lisa. Uh, next up, Tim Parker. Thanks, Rosemary. Yeah, so Tim Parker, I'm the SVP of Network Strategy at Flex Central. And Flex Central is a data center operator. We've got 40 data centers spread throughout the US. One of the things that differentiates us a little bit from folks is that we have a large network presence. Uh, we run our own backbone, we run our own network services, and we've been putting a lot of investment into the edge uh, computing now, working with partners like Dark Points and American Tower and others to help bring services and really connectivity out there to that uh, you know near edge where people need that data. Okay, great. And uh, Philip Marangelo. Yeah, hi, thanks, Mary, and uh, good to be on the panel with uh, friends and familiar faces uh, to talk about uh, hybrid cloud and, and IT. Um, again, Philip Marangella, Chief Marketing Officer at Edge Connects. Um, you know, we obviously started, we build data centers uh, for service providers, content, cloud, 
and IT service providers, network service providers. Um, as it relates to the cloud, it's about bringing the cloud closer to the end users at the edge. So uh, we uh, started out in North America and we are now global and have expanded to Latin America, to Europe and uh, Asia. So in um, roughly 50 markets around the world and uh, numerous data centers uh, to support uh, those customer requirements to bring uh, their uh, data content and cloud services closer to end users. Fantastic. Well, certainly we have the right uh, the right level of people here and a lot to talk about. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, kick it off with uh, one slide. Uh, this is a slide um, that we use, Vertical Systems Group, to talk about uh, transformations. It's basically titled, you know, what um, is driving network transformations and the uh, the five C's is what we call it. It's a, the catalyst for making a change because uh, no one really likes to change if they don't need to. There has to be some reason or some trigger or some catalyst. And we call these the, the C's. And those are control, connectivity, cost, cloud, and cybersecurity. So for instance, when we talk about control, here the catalyst is the need to uh, to look at uh, more closely the management of networks and applications, um, particularly in cross uh, hybrid network environments. And then that leads also to connectivity, which um, is a catalyst for optimizing application performance and, and user experience. And we're seeing so much there and, and um, we'll be interested in the speakers as well because a lot of shifts of different types of connectivity because of the uh, different distributions of the workforce and work from home, work from anywhere, as well as capacities because the demand for bandwidth is is really skyrocketing. And um, that is uh, really an issue that uh, we're seeing also because of a lot of price uh, compression. So the cost per bid is really uh, getting more attractive as the bandwidth goes up. So the cost, issue is always a catalyst to improve uh, value cost ratios. And here looking at uh, OPEX, CAPEX and making uh, decisions on new solutions that are better, cheaper, faster uh, and more cost efficient. And then cloud certainly virtualizing the applications, um, their business applications and the uh, use of public and private uh, cloud solutions. And certainly, um, well, from our research, there's a multitude of legacy applications that are still yet to be transformed. And cybersecurity, which uh, I think is really just a, it's a nonstop challenge. And the, um, uh, the way things have been moving, particularly with transformations, it has become an integral part of that, uh, of that process. So the bottom line is like, what's, so what's uh, driving network and IT transformations uh, a lot. So uh, that's why we're here today and we're going to uh, get started with some, uh, some questions to the speakers. And I think the best place to start is what is the customer perspective? What are the customer benefits of migrating to these new, or if it's not new, then ongoing hybrid IT cloud environments? So, um, uh, Lisa, could you uh, take that one first? Sure. I think about from a customer standpoint, uh, just backing up in terms of understanding where their their vision is. We often partner uh, alongside our clients on business, making sure that we're aligned with their business objectives. And so, mm -hmm. understanding how your business objectives are uh, from a technology standpoint delivered uh, in a streamlined solution. What I think in any business, it's about understanding where to put your data or what options you have and leveraging the best option for uh, the strengths of, whether it's the, some of the strengths of the public cloud or strengths of the private cloud, really understanding how you can uh, streamline and take best advantage of, of the, the benefits of that particular offer. Mm -hmm. I think really understanding that time to value and decreasing your time to value that's tied back to your uh, customer's business ambition is really important. 
that today it, we're seeing so much of that comes into having agility and being able to be an extension of our customers' teams. And that's a, a, the biggest part, I think, in terms of the benefits and, and helping your customer understand where the best solution is, whether that's taking advantage of some of the streamline and flexibility that the public cloud may offer, or some of the uh, more comprehensive and customized solutions that a private cloud may offer. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, uh, who would uh, like to address the, that as well? Philip? You yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll step that, in. Please. Yeah, you know, from, you know, just from your, uh, the customer benefits from migrating to hybrid, right? Uh, obviously, it's it's that flexibility um, that the customer has with, you know, connecting to the right cloud for the right deployment in the right location, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, some stuff's on-prem, some stuff's pure public and so forth. But having partners that help figure that out um, for the customer is is vital. Uh, in terms of their digital transformation uh, journey. But getting back to your slide, which I think was an important one um, in, in the points you laid out, um, you know, there was two that stood out for me in particular, and that's mm -hmm. the in terms of the connectivity as it relates to the user experience, right? And the mm -hmm. performance. Right. And, and that's a huge uh, driver as you look at the, um, and then cost being the other one. But if you look at the volume of data, right, that, that's being consumed and created um, by end users is just skyrocketing dramatically. And then you look at the variety of applications, you know, particularly now because of COVID and we're all at home, right? We're working from home, our kids are studying from home where they were, you know, your Peloton, your TV, streaming, gaming, all this kind of variety is just putting a, burden on the network infrastructure, right? And then, you know, you, you, getting back to the user experience, that velocity, you don't want any of those workloads and applications to, to be um, impeded. Uh, so, so that's what's a huge push uh, and driver for us uh, in terms of a much more distributed architecture to be able to support all those various demands on the network when we as building edge data centers, much like Lauren and, and Tim as well, we're helping enable this, this, all this huge wave of growth and demand for whether it's cloud, whether it's virtual reality, and now the metaverse and all of these kind of things, we're critical to help enable that and having those di distributed architectures interconnected with the networks and the other kind of uh, digital infrastructure mm -hmm. that's being built out. So. It's interesting times. We're all kind of growing yeah. and building, and this is how we're all kind of collaborating because it's not one provider that can do it all. We all have to kind of right. work together, share and support each other. That's yeah, so I'd like to That's excellent. Yeah. to weigh in just quickly on that too. I think Philip hit it, you know, he, he said it right. You've got that interconnection capabilities. You've got this entire ecosystem you have to build. And, you know, one of the things that we're getting a lot of uh, feedback is, is not only the cost, but it's the ability to speed your execution up. You've got your production mm -hmm. systems and stuff that are working maybe in a core data center or your own data center, but you need to get this, the new applications rolling and you can't just take down or impact your ability to do business every day. Mm -hmm. So having mm -hmm. that hybrid, you know, connectivity, being able to run certain workloads out there in the public clouds or private clouds, and then have your core data center still doing all your backend systems is really beneficial to, to a lot of our customers. And I think the customers, you know, uh, Philips and others out there too, who need to be able mm -hmm. to, to make that um, transition when the time is right and have that choice mm -hmm. of when they do it versus having mm -hmm. to just forklift everything at one time. Right. And you see, uh, you know, it's an interesting point because the control aspects of uh, being able to have some visibility into those applications is really important as well. And, and many companies don't, have the uh, ability to to get those kinds of metrics or analytics to uh, make those decisions about what the next you know uh, cloud yeah. should be for that. Yeah, so, that's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, LL, did you want to talk about the um, <laughs> benefits from your side? <laughs> LL. Well, LL. well, the LL who who said he's LL. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but the Lauren, if you <laughs> all right, I'll go first. Uh, here, Lauren, you, 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 Lauren, you can share afterwards. Um, yeah, 
So, so you know, for Zenlayer, we, we see the growth opportunity in the emerging markets because, you know, when you look at, you know, uh, countries that are heavily populated, I mean, just the mobile broadband user base are just going to grow and proliferate, right? I mean, you look at India right now, you know, their inter internet user base is twice the size of the population of the United States, right? And there's just a massive amount of data, just like, you know, Phil was sharing as far as how IoT, autonomous cars, you know, social media apps, they're all being consumed at these edge markets, right? So whether it's like in India, whether it's in China, whether it's in LATAM countries like Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, or even in the Middle East, like Africa, as they're growing as well, the edge services need to be uh, sourced locally, near as possible to that data to really enhance that digital user experience. And so for our companies in there, we, we built a global network across 200 plus data centers where we run network connectivity, point and click on demand, where you could basically provision network services. You can also cloud on-ramp in these data centers into a high, you know, a public cloud infrastructure, whether it's AWS, Azure, et cetera, so that you can have a hybrid or multi-cloud infrastructure. The other unique thing that we deliver so that you can process and compute your data is we run our bed, bare metal cloud edge services in these data centers. So we have 50 locations throughout Asia Pac, US, LATAM, and uh, throughout Europe, where you can literally go into a Zenlayer website and basically dedicate resources so that you can run your gaming application, you can run a live video stream, you can run a blockchain infrastructure on our network. It's literally all point and click. And so we feel the market is gonna go to the edge. Public cloud is always gonna be there, right? You can store data, but I think the complementary of edge services is gonna enhance uh, cloud connectivity. Because if you look at you know cloud infrastructure, they're not in every market around the world. And so, you know, as edge service providers, you know, like some of the data center operators here, we're going into you know, uh, other third party countries, uh, tier two, tier three cities. And so we're allowing customers, we're allowing customers to basically process that data locally so that that digital user experience is really enhanced in those local markets. It's all about performance mm -hmm. and low latency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's done. That was really an area we're going to get to as well as is more on the edge. But um, Lauren, did you want to talk to the, um, the customer benefits part for the, just the, for hybrid hybrid cloud? Uh, well, I, I was just going to comment. It's almost because even just a few years ago, you know, CIOs would have that discussion of, you know, how best do we do this? But, you know, if you look at all the applications and the, the pervasive nature of technology across an organization from HR to finance, to manufacturing, to DevOps, it's, right. it's in every single part. And there is no single way to solve it all. It's like, you know, like, well, like, like Tim and, and Phil both said, Mm -hmm. CIO no longer can say, well, I'm, I'm going to do this a, a colo router. I'm going to do this a private. You, you have the application drives how best to operate it. Um, right. and, and it could also be across multiple modalities where, um, you know, as, as Tim referenced, there could be an application that lives across, you know, a flexential data center and, and also a dark points data center and it works together. So you know, I think, I think mm -hmm. we've, we've entered the age where it's less about what a CIO would like to do and more about what he or she has to do. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, certainly the complexity is skyrocketing and it's um, and it, it's very difficult to make some decisions, um, particularly when some new technologies are being implemented um, because they have to be. It's just more of a, an accelerated implementation that maybe isn't long-term and there's a lot of hesitancy from enterprises. We're, you know, the, what we do research with is the, um, the investment should I invest in something that isn't going to be longer term. So, um, also um, on that, you know, the hybrid IT, um, we've heard from all that. Tim, did you have something you want to talk on on that before we get to edge? Well, you know, back no. to what uh, everybody said. I think we're yeah. we've covered that pretty well, so we can move to edge. Okay, when you're ready. All right, let's move to edge. Would you like to uh talk about yeah. any of the, the question and uh, the question i have is when you say edge is where's the edge i mean how far is the edge i mean what's the edges you know can be anything when we start to look at um you know the transformation to 
manage all the applications, particularly when you get to right. the ones that are, you know, high performance, low latency, and you're talking, you know, AI and machine learning and 5G and IoT and all those things. Um, how far is that edge going to go? We we're kind of getting back to private networks that are basically on, you know, right, right next, right in my, my office and not, right. or my home. Um, you know, yeah. How far does it go? You know, it's really how you want to define it. I think it's, uh, you know, you've got your core data centers, you've got your near edge data centers, as I like to call them, which is what, uh, you know, Philip and, and Flex Central, you know, uh, we focus on those being out in those tier two cities. And then you've got your local edge data centers, which are the, you know, the dark points, the, you know, EDCs that are out there uh, at the edge of these uh you know, tier uh, two markets and, and in these yeah. tier three markets. And it's all about proximity. And, and the edge mm -hmm. can even be defined as a, uh, you know, a compute that's sitting in a manufacturing warehouse uh, helping right. run IoT or AI devices. And the, the key to that is really being able to bring the, the entire ecosystem together. I like to think a lot of times that, uh, you know, really to support the edge, you need to be in that sub five millisecond uh, round trip latency. Uh, you know, and so, you know, a lot of those things are going to be really critical to be able to do processing and manage data out close to the edge. And the edge is going to, you know, we already see it's, it's you know, bringing trillions and trillions of, of data packets back into the networks. You've got to make right. some smart decisions because transport can get really expensive. But on the other hand, you also want to be able to manage that with an interconnection strategy because you're not going to put large compute out at the edge. You're going to have these uh, data mm -hmm. centers that are maybe, you know, a couple hundred KW. But your, your, your big public clouds and all of that is still important. And it's back to what we talked about at hybrid IT. You need the options to do a distributed environment out at the edge. You need the, the connectivity back to your archive, like the, you know, LL was talking about, and to be able to deliver content closer. And you know, gaming is always critical on latency. Yeah. But all those things kind of play together. And you need a whole ecosystem of different folks that kind of help you do that. And then the one thing that I think is really going to change, and it's starting to change now, um, and you know, your, your network hubs are moving away from your tier one cities because latency, you can't transport that traffic all the way back and see 25, 30 milliseconds of latency to get back to a tier one city. You need to start trans, uh, you know, transporting and sharing that traffic out at the edge. And so you're going to see a lot more local traffic that's going to be produced and then it's going to be aggregated. And then only the critical traffic do you want to send back to those tier one cities or back to those public clouds. So you've kind of got to try. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big transformations I think we're going to start seeing is folks are going to start trying to manage their peering and their connectivity out at the edge so that they're not paying those high level transport costs, but also because right. the latency is required. Right. Yeah. You know, Rosemary, just to kind of expand on uh, yes. Tim. I was, just yes. gonna, I was just gonna expand on what Tim was sharing just to kind of share a perfect uh, use case example. Is okay. that the, the edge to us is really about uh, geo geographical distribution, right? I mean, when you look at uh, a customer of ours that has billions of uh, users around the world that does video streaming, okay? Mm -hmm. there's, there's really no way that they can process all that data in a centralized environment. It needs to be distributed in edge right. markets all around the world because they have users in Middle East, Latin market, US, you know, uh, in, in, in Asia Pac, all throughout, right? Mm -hmm. They have to be able to store a lot of that data and that compute nearest possible to the source of that data so that, you know, a young kid that's like streaming some type of data, that latency and performance is really enhanced. And so they need to have a distributed in infrastructure to be able to serve all their end users all around the world because you know, if you have like over what, 600 million active users at one time, <laughs> there's no way they could process all that through a centralized environment. Yeah. yeah. So that's why Edge is actually critical to help serve a lot of these com uh, customers and users all around the world. And, and, and I'll, I'll, and I'll so, add on to both what Tim yeah. and, and sorry to, to, to interrupt that's, Tim and, and Lawrence good. mentioned, um, yeah. you know, in terms of definition of the Edge, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, now the edge is sexy, but we've been doing the edge for, for a decade now, long before it was sexy. And, but we often get asked that question, how do you define it in, in terms of size or location and so forth? Right. And we don't, right. It's our customers who define it in terms of, you know, is it a tier two or tier three market? Is it a mm -hmm. very small data center or it could be hyperscale in a core market. And it just depends on the customer and the workload and their specific requirements. Um, but 
at the end of the day, the other thing that Lawrence said earlier is very important, where we see the greatest growth of the edge is internationally, right? Um, I think the U.S. is, is you know, got a, from a performance and latency perspective, it's it's got a pretty good uh, substantial base of infrastructure. Uh, you know, South America, traditionally, it's always been through Brazil to serve the, the whole right. kind of region. Now you're mm -hmm. seeing, you know, uh, Santiago and Bogota and all these other markets proliferate to support that in Asia. Right? Well, Lawrence mentioned India, you know, so it was all just Mumbai to pretty much support the entire country. And so now mm -hmm. we're trying to build out an entire platform in India to support that huge population and, and demand growth in that country. And again, throughout Asia, China, Indonesia, and so forth, oh, there's this. still tons yeah. of underserved markets um, that go beyond the Singapore's and the Hong Kong's, but to support all those people, all those applications and workloads. And then lastly, there's always, it's traditionally been download centric, like that, that distribution aspect from core out to the edge. But so mm -hmm. much content is being created at the edge now, right? All our TikToks and these real life gamings, uh, the autonomous vehicles and so forth. This is like a multi-directional. And so that's where yeah. you can't take it all the way back to the core. And a lot of the compute and the 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 um, has to be done at the edge. And that's what, like Tim was saying, that edge peering is vital to be able to smartly route that traffic, whether to keep it local, back to the core, other local markets and so forth. And that's what we're really seeing develop. Mm -hmm. Well, that Lauren, would you want to? talk about that one too yeah i was just gonna the I edge. Mean, well it, it actually you know philip stole my thunder but um <laughs> but no what I, I i agree with uh with what he said it's you know because it's been distribution focused you know in, into yes. what lauren said pushing pushing content out has uh, been the key to getting it closer mm -hmm. but you know where, where there's where there's still a chicken and egg and the and the edge is evolving is going to be the multi-directional um the facet of this and how does for example a, a, a game uh and you can pick your multi uh multiplayer online it all has to come back to a central point somewhere you know in a north american server for call of duty for example it all has to connect somewhere and how does that application break itself apart to serve locally but still integrate uh centrally and more importantly, at what point will the application developers be able to invest the R and D to create that type of distributed application when the edge itself, from an infrastructure standpoint, is still is still evolving? Uh, so that mm -hmm. that chicken and egg, and and still still seeing the the market develop from that standpoint is interesting. Yeah. Well, involved. Yeah. So, Lisa, what? Uh... What's in Volta's perspective on on edge? Well, I certainly think the gentlemen have the the technical aspects covered. When we think about where we're going, I'm keeping up with the pace of innovation and mm -hmm. uh, looking at just they're speaking about the global impact. When we think about still what's on the horizon for our uh, our communities here that we're serving, right? Local, state, federal. We know that right. billions of dollars will be put in bandwidth. Uh, infrastructure investment in the coming years and how can we partner with our communities, with our customers mm -hmm. to bring the edge to them, especially in the secondary markets that many of us serve. Uh, customers expect it, they want it today. It's an on-demand generation um, that we're serving. And so it is really important that we continue to be adaptable, leverage each other's partnerships, uh, there's more work out here to be done than 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 any of us could do on on our own, and so uh, right. just knowing that there's there's plenty on the horizon, and that innovation is is driving all of uh, this growth in the industry, mm -hmm. even for faster and further. That's that's interestingly, um, a lot of the uh, applications we're talking about are you know, what I would consider consumer oriented, and you know if someone gets dropped on a a streaming uh session or uh, in the middle of a game i guess I, I know that makes a lot of people really uh you know uh, angry but it you know it doesn't bother me um so the question is what about other types of applications i mean for um you know it's 
it's such a wide range of applications, uh, everything from, as you said, from, you know, streaming to enterprises to, um, you know, public utilities, everything in between. How do you size, you know, what you're doing and how do you uh, pick the right spots to, uh, you know, to build the edges and to, uh, you know, try to, you know, uh, control the performance aspects that your customers are expecting. You know, want to talk to that, Philip? You want to talk to that? Uh, thanks. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, look, oh well. If, if you think about like the digital supply chain, right? This is what what right. you know. It's from data centers to networks to towers and so forth. Um, it all has to kind of interoperate, and and you know we're a key. You know, it, it, you know, it's like rider trucks, right? We're a key enabler, uh, and and we have an interesting view on where the demand is going, right? We we have the largest cloud customers, as customers, um, the the biggest networks and major content providers, and so um, we don't speculatively build our data centers. So we work with them to figure out where do they want to go, when, and 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 how, and to what scale. And, and, you know, again, as I, I touched on before, a lot of our growth, um, you know, we've established the edge in the U.S. across 30 markets, right? That mm -hmm. continues to grow and scale, right? Um, it doesn't mean the core goes away. I'm sitting here in Ashburn, and it's amazing to me, driving to work every day, still how many cranes and four walls are being put up by all these major both cloud, uh, data center providers and cloud service providers right here in the biggest market in the world. So it continues, Ashburn will continue to grow. But if you look at markets like Portland and Denver and um, Detroit and so forth, you know, that was like Ashburn 10 years ago. The amount of mm. data that's traversing those is, is significant in the scale. And they're becoming, you know, smaller regional or local hubs um, in their own right. And then at the same time, the international, you know, I always analogize it to like these airports, right? And you have like the mm -hmm. big hubs like London Heathrow and JFK and LX, but mm -hmm. then all the other, you know, regional hubs and local hubs and different planes and all this kind of stuff. Instead of moving people around, you're just moving these bits and bytes and data and so forth. And it's just, we're part of that supply chain to enable that kind of digital commerce around the world. And it's mm -hmm. all these things, it's consumer, you know, like the gaming is huge. I talked about the metaverse. I mean, you know, you still need, I just wrote an article, you still need the physical verse to enable the metaverse <laughs> to work properly, right? You can't yeah. be in the virtual world and have latency affect, you know, your experience. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be throwing up. So yeah. um, we're all building out at Mach, you know, Mach 2 as fast as we can to right. enable all this stuff. And it's exciting times, really, to be in this industry. And to see what's going on in the different technologies that that consumer and uh, business oriented, and how they're also mm -hmm. kind of overlapping and and um, playing off of each other as well. Right, right. Well, that's yeah. I mean, it is uh, you know tremendous growth, and it's not really there's not an end in sight because more and more of the applications we use require some kind of processing or some kind of uh, interaction. So, um, which brings us to, you know, what types of network connectivity are going to be required? I mean, there's a, a you know, it's really a set, connectivity is essential. I mean, unless you have the connectivity, uh, nothing is going to work. And we, we know that. So, um, I'm interested in looking at um, what do you think is essential in terms of the type of connectivity, the, you know, the bandwidth requirements and how you're managing that and the interconnectivity and um, working with service providers to, um, you know, to make those um, implementations um, so that the edges can, you know, be successful. Um, Tim, you want to start with that? Yeah. Um, so I think there's, there's two aspects of it that is going to make it really successful and is critical. One, you've got to have a good core interconnection that actually gives you access to the public clouds, to the peering exchanges, to the services mm -hmm. and back to the core, those are going to be, you know, part of that ecosystem. And then it, that's going to help you distribute your workloads. And, and when you're pushing applications or pushing security mm -hmm. or any of those things, it's critical to have that network. But I think we're starting to see a shift where people want that network to behave just like they uh, can consume public clouds. They want the dynamic connections. 
They want the ability to turn up and turn down uh, speeds and feeds based on the you know workloads and, and even time of day or, or event. You know, that's one of the, the big uh, things that I, I see a lot is, you know, people want to be able to, to spin up 100 gig waves during an event and then spin them back mm -hmm. down and not pay for those long term commits. So we're starting to see a shift in how people consume networking. And even at the edge, you're going to see that that consume, uh, you know, that that rate of consu uh, consumption mm -hmm. uh, change. And it's not going to be people wanting to move out there and do these you know, 12 or two year type of commits in general. They may do a small mm -hmm. commit, but they need that large mm -hmm. bandwidth for those event driven issues mm -hmm. or for times when they need to move workloads around. I also mm -hmm. think the other thing that you know, I talked about earlier is that local connectivity. So putting an edge data center out there and not having access to the local ISPs and local providers isn't going to do much good when if you have to back all of that traffic, you're just killing your latency, right. you know, um, proposal at that point. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that you have that ecosystem out there and then access to all those back end services. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so, I think. Uh, so Lauren, good. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Lauren. Yeah. Well, I was just, you know, you know, because dark points would, you know, in the paradigm live more, you know, near edge, far edge. And, you know, when we when we look at it, and I'm kind of going to bring in the last question to, um, you know, and it's not really, you know, hey, the edge is here and yeah, all right, great, right. got Good. the edge and the edge is, it's yeah. not, it's not that right. And, and you know, Tim and Philip, you know, we all, we all create the, the base digital infrastructure upon which all of this then builds, right? It, it starts with the data center uh, and on what, you know, and, th and then the, the connectivity, the interconnectivity, um, you know, the cloud infrastructure, high power compute, and really location is critical. You know, when you start getting into these, into these markets where customers want to go, and, and, and like Philip said, we're, this isn't a speculative thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't get it wrong very many times and be successful. So it's right. You know, the right location that not only allows uh, the participants in the market that want greater access to mm -hmm. applications and content, but also the right location that connects to the core uh, that allows the application and content providers to connect. So really, it's it's about enabling that connection. And you, you need agreement from both sides of this is a this is the right place and this is mm -hmm. what's going to work. Because if you build in the wrong place, right. it's um, right. It doesn't have a good uh, so. Outcome. So you're looking for uh, obviously multiple uh, service providers that can can uh, give you diversity, you know, path diversity and resiliency. Is well, that, it's, you know, and, and I'm hearing a, a wave. He's talking about on-demand wave services. Is that um, something that's happening? Well, and I was going to say it's it's a it's a multi-tenant, multi-application environment. It's not it's not just a, a single. I mean, it could be a single tenant if there was a you know, precision agriculture or, or healthcare initiative, right. or, you know, a carrier for that matter that needed this site. But what yeah. we're trying to create is the ecosystem whereby all of these get together um, because that's, that's when the edge truly becomes alive is when we can, when we can replicate, um, you know, and, and add to what exists in an ash burn, you know, in mm -hmm. a, you know, like in a, a small, a small ash burn in Wichita, Kansas, that still feeds, <laughs> You know all the all the local tier ones and connects to them. Mm -hmm. I think okay. I think that's what we see too at Involta mm -hmm. is being that aggregator, that convener, that uh, that resource for your your community and the region to bring the service providers together, the network providers together, uh, and really in, uh, rally around the needs of a regional community. So you can not only ultimately bring that value to your customer uh, in time to value or in access to the to the um, global economy but you're also be uh, you're real, really an in, intricate part of the community and become a um, valuable partner um, both from a local uh, business perspective and uh, you know having those conversations with mm -hmm. uh, public private philanthropic entities as well mm -hmm. right so we've got um, maybe about uh, five minutes or so to the end. It's um, it's great. We could talk for a lot longer, obviously, about all these um, these issues. Um, in a rapid kind of like a, a lightning round question on um, on the top challenge for digital transformation, and there are a lot of a lot of things, but um, I'll give you three, and you can pick one. Just I'm, they're all 
they're all important, but which ones you see um, from your customers and uh, what's uh, happening in terms of the, um, uh, you know, the transformations that you're, you're involved in. And that is, you know, from the standpoint of the ch of challenges, is it mostly technical? Is it organizational or is it financial that is kind of, you know, the obstacle or challenge that you're seeing um, in the market today? And we'll start with um, the top of Phil. Um, yeah, I mean, just keep it short. I mean, I think it's all of the above, right? And mm -hmm. um, to, to varying degrees for different companies, right? And so you that's where you do need partnerships to kind of, um, mm -hmm. we talked about ecosystems, right? And having MSPs and SI partnerships to help solve the hybrid multi-cloud requirements that customers have, right? And uh, I, I think that's the best way to go about it. There's no one, um, you know, yeah. one trick pony for it all, but you have to kind of collaborate <laughs> and solve for the collective right. Uh, challenge. Right, but if you have to pick one, uh, which was the deal, uh, Tim, you, you want to pick one? Well, yeah, so I, I mean, mean it's I, not, if I was it, to... It, I, I agree that everything is, is included, but, um, you know what what's coming up is is kind of something that is more challenging to yeah. to handle I, yeah i would say it's technical and i think the reason why i say it's technical is because your finances and your organization kind of center around what what you pick for mm -hmm. your technology and what you pick for your your journey as we like to call mm -hmm. it and i said it is a journey and, and helping people understand that if you get your your foundation and your building blocks correctly and you can kind of build it that way you don't need to suddenly move everything over to a public cloud tomorrow you know, the idea is to figure out what makes sense, which workloads make sense. And then that way you can go back to your board or your CEO and ask for the right finances to do those baby steps, which is a lot right. easier, you know, a lot more easy to, to get support for if you can show that, hey, we're going to start here and we're going to take our time. And, you know, here's our journey five years down the road. And so yeah. that's what I think is important. But that tech, figuring out the technical aspects of that and which parts you can, yeah. you know, bite off early on and which parts you need to wait until you've got the foundation is really important. Really, exactly. Um, Lisa, you want to pick one or talk sure. to one? Sure. Uh, this is this is definitely difficult. I, I would say, uh, <laughs> from perspective and the lens that that we see it or I see it, uh, is it would be organizational in terms of uh, that's where workforce sits and keeping up, going back to the speed of innovation and the speed at which the industry is changing. Uh, you know, we're we're rapidly having to adjust to new normals in not only our everyday life, but the technology that that is driving it or that is, um, you know, really enhancing the user experience and the uh, business outcomes. So I think from an organizational standpoint, having the workforce, the right people, the right place, the right time, the right budget. Uh, is a really important component, and ultimately, those need to align with um, the, the IT. The CIOs need to all be able to be aligned with the business uh, in, in order to ensure that they have the investment right. for those work, that workforce as well. Right, right. That's great. Yes, um, Lauren. Yeah. So I guess I'll round it out, and I don't disagree with with any of the comments made, but I'm going to go with financial. Okay. Um, and it was it was funny. I can remember um, being on a panel with with Philip uh, a while ago, and another one of the speakers was talking about how they're blowing out to the edge and all this edge, and 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 he and I were like, you know, as as the representatives of the people who spend the first capital dollars to build the edge, <laughs> right? Uh, we haven't seen your financial commitment yet. So I think you know when you when you look across, it goes back to the comments I made of. You know, for a CTO to develop the money in, in the R and D to build an application that's going to massively live at the edge, the right. far edge, well, you need ubiquity. Why do you do it? Ubiquity first requires, you know, data centers to invest the capital to build it. So I think, uh, right. for me, it's it's about financial. And once once those financial commitments are made across the ecosystem, that's that's yeah. going to drive everything. Okay, and so. We haven't heard it. Lawrence, we haven't heard from from you on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's kind of like all of the above, but just kind of like a couple key points that I would probably add on top of that is that, you know, we, we all had to deal with the pandemic world in a way, right? I mean, there was supply chain issues. There were, uh, you know, us all working remote. 
And then you saw this acceleration of online where, you know, you have people doing Zoom calls and things like that, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a paradigm shift where we had to adjust our business. And, um, you know, now we, we have customers, particularly like a blockchain industry that is absolutely blown up right now. And, you know, their, their industry is really interesting because, you know, being typical like a central bank, they're exact opposite. They're a like a, a distributed decentralized infrastructure that leverage edge computing where they need to have uh, these servers and network in these critical markets. Um, so, um, yeah, it's just being able to adjust to all these kind of changes that we all went through and uh, and just kind of like, you know, just adjust your business right. and how you serve your customers in the end as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and um, who did I, did I miss it? Tim, did I give you your, your, uh, yeah. you did ask. Oh. I, I, I did talk. have that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So that's Rosemary, I just, I would I just add, if you look at the chats and the questions, right. They're asking yeah. about security, right. They're asking about. I know. We didn't get and, to security yet. Yeah. I yeah. There was and, a lot in there. You know, and, and so there's also a psychological issue of like, hey, doing what I did before in the, you know, getting comfortable with that digital transformation. So there's there's uh, there's there's all there's there's other variables yeah. as well involved. But I think I yeah, think we'll good. have to leave cybersecurity to another another yeah. session. So um, I think we're almost far we at the end or we have another few minutes. That is all the timing. time we have. Yes. Okay. Great job, Rosemary. And, and thank you, uh, Rosemary, and all of our wonderful speakers. Um, great insights on uh, the next phase of digital transformation. There is still more. So don't worry, Rosemary and speakers. We'll get to security mm -hmm. and all those other, other topics that we're talking about. Uh, just a reminder, our speakers are staying on for the remainder of the lunch hour to answer any more of your questions. And thank you for those who did put questions in our chat today. All you have to do is meet them back in the networking lounge and then table hop and you can talk to as many of our speakers as you would like. And viewers, if you are one of our first 100 registrants, we hope you enjoyed your lunch. Make sure you visit us at jsa.net to register for more upcoming JSA virtual roundtables. Our next one, right. mark your calendars, is December 9th, 1 p.m. Eastern, when leaders in our industry will talk about the state of the European data center and network infrastructure market. That is a wrap. Look out for today's playback of the roundtable. It's coming soon to JSA TV and JSA podcasts on YouTube, iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, and more. In the meantime, right. see you back in the networking lounge. Happy networking. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Great job.